Welcome back everyone! This video is meant to be a short addition to the last one, and it'll go into a lot more mathematical depth than any of the previous videos in this series. To recap, the setup we had at the end of the last video was that we are given one of several versions of a function called mystery toggles, and we were running a quantum algorithm called mystery toggles detective to very efficiently determine which one of the versions we have. The manner in which the algorithm does that is by somewhat miraculously cancelling the amplitudes on all but one of the basis states and leaving all of the amplitude on one particular basis state, which just so happens to encode the version of mystery toggles that was used. We ended last time with a simulation of this algorithm doing its work with a specific instance of mystery toggles for n, the number of x's, equals 2. But in general, to prove that mystery toggles detective works for all n, we need a mathematical proof, so let's dive in. A key feature of Mystery Toggles Detective is that after Mystery Toggles is called, the state vector of our qubits encodes a truth table for Mystery Toggles, which we can call TT, where positive amplitudes correspond to Mystery Toggles outputting answer equals 0, and negative amplitudes correspond to Mystery Toggles outputting answer equals 1. If you remember from the last video, when we do the instruction Hadamard all from this truth table state, all of the amplitude ends up on just one state, where the zeros and ones indicate the absence or presence of particular lines of code in the version of mystery toggles being used. This string of bits that encodes the version of mystery toggles used is especially useful, so let's give it the name goal. Also, it should be noted that only the first n bits of the n plus 1 bit output state are needed to determine which version of mystery toggles was used, one for each of the x's. So such a goal state could have either 0 or 1 as its final bit. But if you do some experiments, you'll notice that answer is always 1 after mystery toggles detective is finished. So let's define goal so that its final bit is a 1, since that's what we can believe to be true from experimentation and we'll see in the proof I'm about to show you that this ends up working out. Ultimately, we want to show that if we do Hadamard all from the truth table state of MT, then the qubits end up in the goal state of MT, and we want to show that for any number n of x's and all possible versions of mystery toggles MT with n x's. The way I came up with to prove this uses induction. For induction, we need to first show a base case, which is when n equals 0, meaning that there are no x's. Mystery toggles simply does nothing in this case. h all of n plus 1 here is just h, the regular Hadamard matrix for one qubit. The truth table state tt here is plus minus, because if answer is originally 0, then it stays at 0, and if answer is originally 1, then it stays 1. Goal is a bit string with a single bit 1 for answer, because there are no bits for the x's. So h times tt, as we can see, leaves all of the amplitude on the basis state 1, which is the goal state. So the base case checks out. Now we need to do the inductive step, which means assuming that what we are trying to prove is true for some number n of x's, and using that to prove that it is still true for n plus 1 x's. When we have n plus 1 x's, we have n plus 2 total qubits, so we need to show that h all of n plus 2 times tt equals goal. Think about transitioning from n x's to n plus 1 x's. Let's interpret the first x in the state name as the one we just added, x nu if you will. I'm going to use a specific example number of qubits and version of mystery toggles here to help visualize what's going on but everything I'm about to show you is completely generalizable. We'll consider two cases. The first one is where there is not a line in mystery toggles that says if x new then toggle answer. To exemplify that, let's use this version of mystery toggles that operates on n plus 1 x's, x new and x1 through xn, and only has a line of code that says if x1 then toggle answer. This version of mystery toggles induces a truth table state dt and a corresponding goal state. Here, we can split tt in half based on whether the x nu bit is 0 or 1. We'll call the first half tt x nu equals 0, and the second half tt x nu equals 1. 
Notice that these two halves are actually equal to each other in this case, since the non-existence of a line in mystery toggles that says if x new then toggle answer means x new being 0 or 1 has no effect on the truth table state. Now let's see how the equation we want to prove holds up. Using the recursive rule for Hadamard matrices, we can split h all of n plus 2 into these four block matrices and do block matrix multiplication with the two halves of tt. Here we can see that the output state vector is 2 h all of n plus 1 times tt x nu equals 0 on the top and the 0 vector on the bottom. And we can really just pretend that the constant of 2 doesn't exist here, since the thing we really care about is the sign of all of the entries in the vector. Now comes the critical step. We notice that tt x nu equals 0 is itself a truth table state for the version of mystery toggles with the same behavior as this one, but operating on the n x's that aren't x nu, since x nu has no effect on the result of answer. Since we stepped down one x, we can use the inductive hypothesis, which tells us that h all of n plus 1 times tt x nu equals 0 equals the goal state for that version of mystery toggles, which gives us the final n plus 1 bits of our desired goal state, the bits for x1 through xn, and answer. And since the bottom half of our state vector is the 0 vector, we know that the first bit of the state is 0, which is correct, since the goal state should have a 0 in the bit for x nu. The second case is where there is a line that says if x new then toggle answer. The steps of the proof in this case are very similar, but a few things get flipped around. Namely, since the value of x new now changes the result of answer, tt x new equals 0 and tt x new equals 1 are opposites of each other. This means that the result of the matrix multiplication now leaves h all of n plus 1 times tt x new equals 0 on the bottom half and the 0 vector on the top half. And using the same reasoning as before, we correctly get a goal state where this time there is a 1 in the first bit, since there is a line of code that says if x new then toggle answer. And there we go, that's the proof. Now you may be sitting there thinking, that was really strange and esoteric. What's even the point of mystery toggles again? The answer to that question is, as I've suggested through the title of this series, well there is no point. There is no situation in the practical world where someone would hand you a black box containing a physical device operating on qubits that they promise behaves according to this oddly specific class of functions and you would actually need to be able to efficiently deduce which one it is. All that being said, mystery toggles, or rather the bernstein vazirani problem as I explained in the previous video, is a perfect pedagogical tool, an introductory example of the advantage of quantum computation. And indeed, the two most famous quantum algorithms, being Shor's algorithm for factoring integers and Grover's algorithm for the canonical NP-complete satisfiability problem, both use the technique of preparing a uniform superposition of all possible inputs to a function, then simultaneously computing that function on all of the inputs and doing some magic cancellation of amplitudes on undesirable states. However, you may find it surprising that despite this quantum programming paradigm being around since the 1990s, there haven't really been many other breakthroughs since then in the way of solving classical problems with quantum computers. On the one hand, that may be discouraging since many of the world's greatest minds have failed to make huge progress in this area for almost three decades. But on the other hand, now that you know some of the basic ideas behind quantum programming, maybe you could be the one to make the next great theoretical advancement in quantum computing. Thanks for watching.